Just a few years ago, Washington thought it could stop China's tech rise by cutting off Huawei. No chips, no growth, simple, right? But that move may have triggered something far more dangerous. Huawei didn't fade, it fought back. And now, their AI chips are starting to replace NVIDIA, not worldwide, but right where it matters, inside China. For investors and retirees watching global markets, this is more than a tech rivalry. It's a major shift in economic power. The question now isn't if the world is changing. It's how fast and who's going to win. For years, NVIDIA was the gold standard in artificial intelligence. If you wanted to run advanced AI models, train massive language systems, or build tools that could predict markets or analyze medical data, you needed their chips. Their GPUs were like the oil of the digital age, powering everything from self-driving cars to facial recognition. And with over 80% of the global AI chip market in their hands, NVIDIA wasn't just a strong player, it was the player. In China, they held an astonishing 95% share. No other company came close. And then came the turning point. In 2019, the US government began issuing export bans aimed squarely at China's tech giants. First, it was Huawei's 5G equipment. Then it extended to advanced semiconductors, the very lifeblood of modern computing. The idea was clear. If the US could cut off access to the world's most powerful chips, it could slow down China's technological rise. Companies like TSMC, which manufactured chips for everyone from Apple to NVIDIA, were no longer allowed to work with Huawei. Equipment makers like ASML were banned from selling the tools China would need to catch up. On paper, it made sense. After all, semiconductors are not just business, they are national security. Control the chips and you control the future. At the time, it looked like a knockout blow. Huawei's phone business was collapsing, and many believed its AI ambitions would die with it. But that's not what happened. Instead of folding, Huawei began to fight back. It restructured its entire business and funneled tens of billions into chip research and development. The company went from relying on foreign technology to building its own. And it wasn't alone. The Chinese government launched a massive campaign for tech self-sufficiency, injecting state funds into domestic chip makers and research labs. A national mission was born. Meanwhile, in the US, most assumed that the ban would secure NVIDIA's dominance. If China couldn't access cutting-edge GPUs, they'd be forced to fall behind. But what Washington may not have considered is this. When a nation as large, resourceful, and determined as China gets pushed into a corner, it doesn't freeze. It adapts. And that's exactly what's been happening behind the scenes. This isn't just a trade war. It's a battle over the future of technology, one that will affect global markets, innovation, and even national security. For investors and policymakers alike, it's critical to understand that this isn't business as usual anymore. It's a shifting of power, measured not in tanks or missiles, but in nanometers and teraflops. And Huawei? It's not just surviving. It's building something big, something that could reshape the entire AI landscape. When the US sanctions hit, most of the world expected Huawei to buckle. After all, how could a company cut off from the world's most advanced chip makers and equipment possibly compete in the AI arms race? Its smartphone sales plummeted, its global partnerships evaporated, and its name became synonymous with trade restrictions. For a time, it looked like the US had won. But what few predicted, and what's unfolding now, is a textbook case of unintended consequences. The sanctions didn't destroy Huawei. They radicalized it. Almost overnight, Huawei turned inward and launched one of the most aggressive research efforts in modern tech history. Its R&D spending soared to over $25 billion a year, more than 20% of its total revenue. This wasn't just about saving the business. It became a matter of national pride. With full government backing, Huawei's mission was clear become self-reliant in semiconductors and break free from American technology. Out of this pressure came the Ascend chip series, Huawei's answer to NVIDIA's dominance. These chips weren't just placeholders. The Ascend 910B and later the 910C were designed from the ground up to power modern AI workloads, from deep learning to large-scale model training. Early reports showed that they weren't just functional, they were competitive and Chinese tech giants noticed. 
Major players like Alibaba, Tencent, and ByteDance, who all depend heavily on AI infrastructure, began adopting Ascend chips. Not necessarily because they wanted to, but because they had to. US export bans made it nearly impossible to get NVIDIA's top-tier chips like the A100 or H100. So domestic companies turned to domestic solutions. The result? Huawei found itself with a captive market of eager customers, and the momentum to keep developing faster. Meanwhile, in the US, something unexpected was happening. NVIDIA's own leadership started to sound the alarm. CEO Jensen Huang warned that the export restrictions could backfire, and in many ways, they already were. In just a few years, NVIDIA's market share in China dropped from 95% to nearly 50%. Huang even praised Huawei's computing capabilities and warned lawmakers that continued sanctions could accelerate China's technological independence. Huawei also found a key ally in SMIC, China's leading chip foundry. Even though SMIC couldn't access the latest EUV lithography machines due to sanctions, it still managed to produce 7 nanometers, and reportedly even 5 nanometers class, chips using older equipment. Yields were low at first, but steadily improved. In essence, Huawei and SMIC began doing with less what others thought was impossible without the best. What we're witnessing isn't just a recovery, it's a reinvention. Huawei turned crisis into opportunity, and pressure into innovation. With every new chip, it's narrowing the gap between itself and NVIDIA, at least within China. And for a nation the size and scale of China, that's more than enough to shift global dynamics. This is no longer just about business. It's about technological sovereignty. And Huawei's resurgence may be the most important economic story that many investors still aren't watching closely enough. By now, it's clear that Huawei didn't just survive, it adapted, fought back, and built something powerful. But let's ask the big question investors and analysts are really interested in. Are Huawei's chips actually any good? Are they just stopgap solutions for a restricted domestic market, or are they truly capable of challenging NVIDIA in performance and scale? Let's start with the hardware. Huawei's Ascend series has evolved rapidly. The Ascend 910B was the first sign that something serious was happening. In real-world benchmarks, it performed at roughly 80% of NVIDIA's A100 chip. A remarkable achievement considering Huawei was cut off from key tools and manufacturing capabilities. In some specific AI tasks, the chip even outperformed the A100 by 20%. And remember, this isn't just about raw numbers, it's about practical use. For many Chinese companies blocked from buying NVIDIA products, that kind of performance is not just acceptable, it's vital. Then came the Ascend 910C, which took things a step further with a dual chiplet design. It reportedly reaches 60 to 70 percent of the performance of NVIDIA's H100, one of the most powerful AI chips on the global market today. That's not enough to unseat NVIDIA globally, but for China's domestic needs, it's already good enough to power serious AI development, including training large language models and deploying massive data infrastructure. Now, attention is shifting to the upcoming Ascend 910D, a chip rumored to directly challenge NVIDIA's crown jewel, the H100. Huawei is quietly testing this chip with major Chinese tech firms. While exact specs are under wraps, not surprising, given the geopolitical sensitivity, industry sources suggest it may even match or exceed the H100 in some areas. That's not just a tech upgrade. That's a statement. But Huawei isn't stopping at individual chips. They're thinking in systems. Their Cloud Matrix 384, a supercomputer-style AI rack powered by Ascend 910C chips, is reportedly outperforming NVIDIA's H800 systems. The watered-down H100 version still allowed for export to China. And here's the key. These systems are designed and optimized specifically for China's growing AI needs, unshackled from US software and supply chains. That leads us to software, the hidden but crucial piece of the puzzle. NVIDIA's massive advantage comes from its CUDA ecosystem, 
a programming environment that has become the default for AI developers globally. Huawei has responded with CAN, Compute Architecture for Neural Networks, its own alternative. It's improving and gaining traction in China, but it's still young. Estimates suggest CANN's developer community is only one-tenth the size of CUDA's. That gap matters, because even the best hardware is limited without optimized software support. So, is Huawei crushing NVIDIA? Globally, no but within China, Huawei is rapidly closing the gap. And in a market of 1.4 billion people with strong political and industrial support, that may be all it needs to build a dominant AI ecosystem. For international investors and tech watchers, this is a clear signal. The world is splitting, and Huawei is building a new center of gravity for AI, one chip at a time. What began as a targeted effort to slow down a single Chinese company has now evolved into something much bigger, a fracture in the global technology landscape. Huawei's rise in AI chips isn't just about semiconductors. It's about economic independence, political leverage, and a long-term shift in who controls the tools of the future. For decades, the West, and especially the United States, held a near-total monopoly on cutting-edge AI hardware and software. Now, that monopoly is under real threat, not just from a competitor, but from a competing system. Let's break it down. There are now two parallel tech ecosystems forming. One is led by the US, built on NVIDIA's hardware and the global CUDA developer community. It's open, deeply integrated, and dominant across most of the Western world, including Europe, Japan, and much of Southeast Asia. The other is emerging in China, built around Huawei's Ascend chips and the growing CAN software stack. This system is more closed, more controlled by the state, but increasingly self-sufficient. This split isn't just inconvenient. It's costly and dangerous. It means duplicated efforts, incompatible standards, and less collaboration between the world's top AI researchers. It creates inefficiencies in global supply chains, where parts can no longer flow freely across borders. And it introduces the risk of technological isolation, where Western firms can't access Chinese innovations, and Chinese firms can't access Western ones. This raises prices, slows progress, and makes the global tech market more volatile. But it also unleashes competition and innovation. Much like the space race of the 20th century, the AI chip war is driving both sides to move faster and think bigger. In the US, we've seen the passage of the CHIPS Act, injecting tens of billions of dollars into domestic semiconductor manufacturing. New fabs are being built in Arizona and Texas. Taiwan and South Korea are investing heavily to maintain their edge. Meanwhile, China is throwing everything it has at this, from subsidies and tax breaks to full-scale national programs aimed at catching up, and in some areas, leaping ahead. And then there's the software battleground. While Huawei is still years behind CUDA in maturity and global reach, they're not standing still. Chinese universities, startups, and government labs are pouring resources into making CAN a real contender. There's even talk of open-source AI models being trained specifically for Huawei hardware, models that could eventually spread beyond China if they prove useful enough. For investors, the implications are enormous. NVIDIA could lose tens of billions in future revenue as China closes its doors. Huawei, once on the ropes, is now potentially sitting on a domestic market worth hundreds of billions of dollars. Western tech companies that once relied on global integration may now be forced to choose sides, restructure supply chains, and navigate a far more fragmented world. The question now isn't whether this tech cold war is happening, it's how far it will go, and who will come out stronger on the other side. The battle between Huawei and NVIDIA isn't just a tech rivalry, it's a mirror reflecting the deeper shifts in global power. What began as a calculated move to slow China's technological rise has unintentionally fueled it. And now Huawei, once considered crippled by sanctions, is helping China build its own AI infrastructure, chip by chip, server by server. NVIDIA remains dominant on the world stage, especially in the West. But inside China, the game has changed. Huawei's Ascent chips, once an underdog effort, 
are now serious challengers, not just because of performance, but because of politics, scale, and national willpower. For investors, policymakers, and everyday viewers trying to understand where the world is heading, this is the story to watch. The future of AI and of global influence may no longer be decided in Silicon Valley alone. So what do you think? Will the world continue to split into rival tech spheres? Can Huawei maintain this momentum? Or will Nvidia strike back? Let us know in the comments. And if you found this breakdown valuable, make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. We'll keep following this story because it's far from over.